Hey friends, so I wanted to try something a bit different this time and react to some of the feedback and comments about Ableton's latest 12.3 update, specifically their new stem splitting feature. This update was a doozy, and in my opinion, it was an attempt by Ableton to address a bunch of requested features from their user base. Many folks said that they were curious about the speed of the new stem split feature, and some folks were reporting that the process takes a long time. So what I've decided to do is to take three separate systems and compare the speed of the stem splitter all using using the exact same sample. This 51 second clip is from my band Papadocio's tune Zoom Out, which crucially features vocals along with live drums, which in my opinion is the best way to stress test any stem separation process. Now the first system is of course my M1 MacBook Pro, which has 10 cores, 64 gigabytes of RAM, but also has a 24 core GPU. The second system is an Ableton Push 3 standalone, running of course its Intel NUC, and then the third system <laughs> is a kind of dated MSI gaming laptop PC with an NVIDIA uh, GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. Now, I know that this is an extremely unfair test, but I think it's worth doing because it'll help folks know what to expect timing-wise when using the Ableton stem separation feature. Wow, so the M1 Pro took about five and a half seconds. Let's move on to the push. Now, as much fun as it might be to watch a status bar, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so we can get to the results. Okay, so a minute and five and a half seconds, adding an entire minute to the same exact process on the push. Let's go ahead and look at the PC. All right, same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so we can get to the results. So yeah, roughly 52 seconds for the gaming PC, only just barely beating the Ableton Push standalone. Okay, so the results are in, and unsurprisingly, the M1 MacBook Pro smashed the competition here, taking just under six seconds to complete the stem separation. Meanwhile, the PC took second place with 52 seconds, which, if you think about it, is just about real time considering this is a 51 second clip. And then in last place was the Push standalone, which took a fair bit longer at one minute and 10 seconds. So some comments on the speed test. I'm obviously not a PC user and it's possible that there's something deeply wrong with this PC. Also, I can't be sure if the Indivia card was even used in the stem separation process or not. So maybe there's some kind of configuration that I can use to make the process go faster. But even in the case of the Push, all three machines managed to separate the stems in what I would consider to be an acceptable speed. I will say this though, I would get up and go do something else like get a coffee or something if I was using the Push or the PC, but if I was using the Mac, I could just push the button and then just sit there for the five seconds it would take to separate the stems and then move on with working. Now, some folks were trashing the quality of the stem separation, which is a fair point. However, if you were perceptive in the last test, you may have noticed that my stem separation dialog had an extra set of options where you could choose between high speed or high quality. So I went ahead and tested the M1 MacBook Pro and the PC using the high quality mode. And while it did take longer to separate the stems, I was impressed by the quality, specifically the vocals. Here are the results of the high quality mode speed tests. So a key difference I noticed during the high quality stem separation mode is that um, there's actually a status bar dedicated to each individual stem. And yet again, instead of making you sit through this whole thing, we're gonna go ahead and skip to the end. And as you can see, the MacBook Pro clocked in at 20 seconds, um, which is basically four times the amount that it took to do the uh, standard stem separation, whereas the PC, it took five minutes and 46 seconds to do the same exact process. Okay, so speaking to the quality of the stem separation, let's go ahead and listen to the original mix of my band song, Zoom Out. At this very moment, Okay, so that's the original mix. Let's go ahead and listen to just the vocals now. Let's focus on the vocals. I'll go ahead and loop a section here. 
At this very moment, outside of the earth, at this very moment. Now, potentially you're listening to this and you're saying, well, I hear some volume ducking and it kind of sounds stuttery. Well, that's going to happen with most material that has drums behind it, because what's happening is that the drums are challenging your limiter and the limiter is ducking the music. So if you're extracting vocals out of rock music, dance music, things like that, this is just going to be something that happens regardless. So I wanted to quickly validate why I said before about how when you heard that pumping and breathing in the vocals, um, that the reason that that's in the stem separation file is because the uh, entire mix is ducking when it's being driven into a compressor or a limiter on your master. In this case, this <laughs> silly and hastily made example song that I just sang demonstrates that when you don't have a crazy amount of compression on a mix, that the vocals will come out clean. So let's go ahead and listen to this <laughs> hastily made terrible thing. No. Okay, so I'm going to separate this into stems. We can just use the high-speed mode just to demonstrate this. Now let's listen to the vocals. Notice how it doesn't pump because the drums are not challenging the limit up. So there you go. There is no pumping or breathing on the vocals because yet again, this mix isn't being driven. So I think what can happen is folks will download a stem splitter or they'll use a stem splitter with whatever material they're messing with that day. And they'll make a judgment as to whether that stem separation algorithm is good or bad based on the material they're feeding into it versus the actual technology. Because the technology that allows all of this to happen is pretty similar at the end of the day. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, pumping and breathing is not specific as much to an algorithm as it will be specific to the material that you feed into it. But putting that aside, I'm actually very impressed by this algorithm's ability to not only detect the main vocal, but to also detect the background vocals and to get the associated delays and reverbs with the vocals isolated from everything else. I mean, I think that's incredible. Now let's go ahead and listen to the difference between the high quality mode and the standard mode. At this very moment, outside of the earth, at this very moment, outside of the earth, at this very... Now, to me, there is a very, very minuscule difference. It's almost completely imperceptible, the difference between the high quality and the standard mode. And that is also very impressive, this algorithm's ability to extract the vocals even in standard mode and uh, associate all the background vocals and the uh, delays and reverbs. That's just awesome. But let's go ahead and listen to the drums. The, this is where differences start to occur. So let's listen to the drums and we'll go back and forth between the two different quality modes. So maybe you picked up on the fact that in the uh, high quality drum stem separation, there's actually extra percussion in there that's not present in the high speed mode. Take a listen again. So right there, there's actually a difference in what was even captured in the stem separation. Another thing that I've noticed is that you can hear, especially in the uh, snare tails, the snare tails actually get uh, darker faster in the uh, standard separation. Take a listen to the snare. It's just a little bit darker. Now, this actually might be advantageous in some ways if you're trying to apply a different reverb to the drums when you um, extract drums from uh, whatever track you're working on. So again, I'm not necessarily saying that the high quality mode in this case is better, but where it does actually get better is here in the others track. So this would be all of the instruments outside of the bass, drums, and vocals. <laughs> So now we'll go ahead and listen to the, the standard quality or the high speed mode. We can hear those reverbs from the drums in there. We can hear a couple bass notes. We can even hear a couple uh, vocal echoes that were captured in here. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that it sounds to me like the others track benefits greatly from being on the high quality mode versus some of these other tracks. 
All in all, though, here's the thing that I think about all this. If you're going to be doing the kind of work where you're extracting an instrument or vocals or something from a stem separation algorithm, there's no way that you can expect a super high quality recording of a soloed instrument inside of a studio in isolation. It's just not going to be that high quality no matter what algorithm or what DAW you use to do the stem separation. So at the end of the day, I consider this good enough to do good work with. And honestly, its ability to capture acoustic drums that are dynamic and that move around, its ability to isolate the vocals and the background vocals and the delays and reverbs, I think really make this stem separation algorithm pretty good. And any gains that you would get from using a different stem separation algorithm are going to be marginal at best. And really, until the technology itself improves, where we're not using FFT spectral style processing and we're, uh, you know, just taking a single printed waveform and trying to use incredibly narrow filters to determine which frequency goes with which instrument, until we're using something maybe like additive synthesis to reconstruct instruments or who knows what kind of technologies we're going to come up with, until that happens, this is about as good as you can expect. Now, I think it's also fair to say that when you go to bring up this dialogue and you want to extract stems, there's only four options, okay? There are other stem separation algorithms that have more options for uh, different stem categories than obviously these four categories here. Okay, but here's the thing. Look, Ableton left themselves all kinds of room. This dialogue could get a lot bigger, right? And I really do think that um, as these demands come in and as the underlying company Music.ai uh, expands their capabilities, then so will Ableton. I mean, it's just only a matter of time. So at the end of the day, I still think that this stem separation, even if it's not as uh, feature rich as other stem separators, it's still a net win for Ableton's user base. Cool, so I wanted to conclude this video by saying kind of one more thing, and that's that I feel like Ableton is going in the right direction using machine learning technology or AI technology. And the reason I say that is that it's local, it's based on your computer, um, Music.ai themselves even uh, claim to be training their algorithms uh, ethically. Now, I feel like anybody could just say that, so who knows what the, the actual thing is, but um, this is as opposed to services services like Suno, who um, are obviously ripping off huge libraries of licensed music that they didn't pay for. Suno is essentially committing theft, whereas uh, Ableton is utilizing this technology to amplify you as a musician versus utilizing the technology to simply turn your brain off and let the computer do it for you, right? If you go to music.ai's website, you'll see a paragraph where they talk about their ethical approach. And one thing they write is that Music AI is committed to training exclusively on licensed content and collaborating with only third parties that uphold responsible and ethical practices in AI development. Um, now, again, anybody could write anything, you know, uh, you can just write what you want on your website. But as of right now, and to my knowledge, there aren't any lawsuits up against music.ai versus Suno, where there are multiple lawsuits. And not only that, um, it's obvious that there is a difference between a company that's trying to empower musicians and give us creative capacity versus companies like Suno, who are obviously more focused on the financial capabilities of their company versus amplifying musicians and upholding the community. So I know I digress, but I just had to say that. So, yeah, I feel like Ableton's moving in the right direction. Um, if you're interested, maybe I'll do uh, more of a deep dive on a video about my personal thoughts about AI in the music space and the implications of all that. But, yeah, I know that I didn't uh, download a bunch of different um, stem separation algorithms and compare them with each other. The reason I didn't do that is because there are already so many great videos on that topic. So, yeah, a simple search in the search bar above will, will get you to that if you're really concerned about uh, choosing the right one or whatever. But, I mean, it's convenient. It's built into Ableton. Again, it vastly depends on the material that you feed into it as to whether you're going to get the kind of results that you're looking for or not, way more than it matters which algorithm you use. So one more thing, these videos are sponsored by me, and it's no secret that I run a pretty hefty Black Friday sale every year on my Ableton courses. So if you feel like uh, you could benefit from me as your teacher, and you're interested in checking out my four different courses on the four different aspects of using Ableton Live songwriting, mixing, live performance, and then sound design, uh, definitely sign up below. I'm going to put a little uh, field where you can put your email address in so you know when the sale goes live. Um, yeah, anyway, one way or another, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell. You know what to do. Much love. See you next time.